Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this short game to the come video, we're going to be discussing graphics card rumors galore. We're going to start things out with AMD and the RX Vega providing excellent price slash performance, according to some industry insiders. And then we're going to move over to NVIDIA and the fact that we might not be seeing Volta for gaming. Instead, we may see a die shrunk Pascal. We'll get into that rumor in just a second. RX Vega is waiting in the wings to be launched specifically for gamers and bitsandchips.it specifically their Twitter the English Twitter has decided to release a couple of comments now to be fair they have been pretty accurate with stuff from AMD in the past especially with Ryzen and Threadripper so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt but obviously pinch of salt and all that until we finally see the prices and performance of the GPUs. Regardless, according to Bits and Chips, they have said that Vega will have terrific slash price slash performance ratio according to his sources, and he believes that AMD will release even a Nano Vega. Now, a couple of comments before I continue. First of all, price and performance ratio don't really mean much. For example, you could put out 50 frames a second at, I don't know, 720p, but cost $20, and that's a pretty good price performance ratio. On the other hand, you could also have 4K 60 frames per second, but cost like 700 US dollars to some. That would also be a pretty good price slash performance ratio, considering that quite often for 4K at 60 FPS, you do need a hefty GPU setup, at like, you know, two 1080s to really hit 60 FPS. Some games don't even do it with a 1080 tie. Let's just be honest here. It's Spinning distance with most titles, but not quite. So it's possible that we'll either see them be very competitive with NVIDIA on pricing or be very similar in pricing, let's say, to the GTX 1080 or 1080 tie, but offer slightly better performance. Unfortunately, that's a mystery. As for the fact that it's got Nano uh, Vega, I'm about as shocked as what I am to say that, you know, if you jump from the Empire State Building, you're probably going to be less healthy than when you were on top of the Empire State Building from the landing. It's just kind of one of the reasons that they used HBM2. And honestly, if they didn't do it, I would almost go as far as to say that they wasted the opportunity for HBM. Um... It's also got other usages as well, other than, you know, making really small GPUs, such as mobile-based uh, scenarios, for example, laptops. But Nano is definitely something I expected to see. I'll be interested to see if there's any power consumption issues, uh, heat, that type of thing with the Nanos. So what about performance? Another user asks them, and I quote, but will Vega beat Pascal like you claimed in an earlier tweet? You don't seem so confident now, and neither does AMD, end quote. The user operating Bits and Chips Twitter said, and I quote, Vega will be a great big GPU, but to attack the HPC market, AMD needs Navi. Now, before everyone starts running around screaming in panic, do note the term HPC market, not gaming market. Now, it's obvious that for certain usage scenarios, NVIDIA have basically the market sewn up, especially with AI slash HPC specific tasks. Uh, the fact that it has excellent double precision hardware and NVIDIA offering Tensor cores for Volta. We'll get more into that in a moment. But essentially what those are is for calculating artificial intelligence, that type of stuff. So with the Volta um, high-end cards, they have equipped them with 640, which means you've got over 100 teraflops of performance. This is a five times increase over Pascal, which is an awful lot. That's a lot of performance, to be totally honest. If I had to take a guess, that means that really Navi, from what he's saying, is going to be where we see FP64 capable GPUs. It's also rather interesting to me that we've seen so many comparisons with RX Vega, you know, from AMD themselves, but all of the time it's against NVIDIA's older architectures. We're not seeing it against Volta. So, as usual, just wait. Ah, speaking of news which is possibly going to trigger people, let's talk about NVIDIA. So, as we are probably aware, there was Maxwell, then there was Pascal, and then there's Volta for gaming, right? Not so much, at least according to a website by the name of Fudzilla. They have sources, and those sources are not 
telling us good things for Volta coming to gaming. In fact, it looks like... Well, actually, I'm going to read it out verbatim. Um, a quote, if you will. The dedicated follower of Pascal is now a Pascal influence design derived shrunk down. With Maxwell architecture, NVIDIA chose to optimize the GPU for better memory management. Back then, it became apparent NVIDIA that HPM and HPM2 would not be mainstream in time for Pascal. Fudzilla already mentioned the fact that Pascal follower will not use HPM2 memory. So essentially, what we have here is Pascal being shrunk from 16 down to 12 nm. We can presume there's going to be higher clock speeds with that. Now, this is very interesting to me as a slight aside for a different reason. I believe it was latish last year. I'd have to double check my uh, archives, but I did cover a story which told us that NVIDIA were actually thinking of releasing an upgraded version of Pascal, but there was very little said about that. It, it was like, it was a rumour that kind of swirled around for a bit and then just kind of fell on its face and then we only heard about Volta. So maybe two things. One, NVIDIA never deviated from that, but the rumours just kind of dried up because they just let it sit because they've been on top of the high-end market for so long they didn't feel the need to push. Or they just decided, hey, you know what, let's go back to this original plan. Now, the reason behind this essentially is because Volta is organized to use HBM2 and basically I'm guessing anyway NVIDIA feel that whatever they've heard about um, Vega I mean this is making an assumption but whatever they've heard about Vega they don't feel it's enough of a threat to push forward another thing and this is a different thing entirely you've got to remember that NVIDIA have their fingers in a lot of pies at the moment they're not just focused on gaming so possibly They've designed Volta really for gaming specific use, sorry, for um, HPC slash high-end scenarios, specifically like deep learning, AI, that kind of crap. So really they don't feel that that's necessarily what is going to be best for gaming. So they don't feel Volta would necessarily be good as it is for gaming. They feel instead it's better to stick with Pascal. Now, I'm going to make a guess that if they are what is essentially doing a slight redesign of Pascal, there's probably going to be some other changes inside of it. So it's probably not just going to be like, oh, okay, shrunk it down, increase the clock speeds by 200 megahertz, good to go. There's probably going to be some other differences. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the architecture from Volta does make its way retrospectively into Pascal. That would make some sense to me. Obviously, I don't know that for certain because, well, I don't have my um, little spy cameras in NVIDIA's labs, unfortunately. I can tell you one thing, though, it does make things very tricky in the GPU market, because obviously for some time now, assuming this rumor is true, and obviously we don't know yet, but assuming it is true, it could be that NVIDIA just are going to put out just enough performance, just enough, to basically fend off Vega, which essentially puts us all in a weird position. It means AMD really need to reduce the price of Vega as much as possible, which is going to be very interesting considering HPM2 is in there. It puts us in an interesting scenario because that really means, let's say these GPUs are 25% faster. Obviously, I don't know. It could be 50% faster, but let's say they're 12, let's say 25% faster at best than the previous generation. Really, that means that if you bought a 1080 on launch or a 1070, that's really good value. On the other hand, they might be faster, especially in certain tasks. Perhaps NVIDIA will have improved the architecture for DirectX 12. Maybe that's one of the things they're going to be redesigning. Either way, it's going to be very curious. Unfortunately, whether 12nm versus 16nm actually makes a difference, a tangible difference in real world, I don't know. I mean, with any luck, we're going to see the reduction of power uh, needed to, well, you know, run the GPU. Presumably, that could also mean we could fit in more CUDA cores, because obviously one of the benefits of shrinking down a process is that you can put more silicon into the same space, or rather, more transistors, more stuff into the same space. So who knows? Maybe they'll stick in an extra couple of hundred CUDA cores for, like, the equivalent of the 1080. Let's call it the 2080 or whatever. That would be kind of nice. So let's say they did do that. Let's say they bumped it up to, I don't know, the high 2000s, maybe low 3000s for the 1080 or the 2080, I guess. Increase the clock speed, I don't know, 200 megahertz. That would be a very nice GPU. But 
as usual, all we can do is wait. It's kind of weird. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.